from me. I will see you on the next video. Right on. That video was all about remembering your set, the best way to go about it and what to do in those rare, horrible times when we do draw blank and forget what the hell it is we are saying. I give you all the tips and techniques I can think of as well as what to avoid. So it's a good one. It's a deep one. There's a lot to get you. Let's dive right in. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Comedy. My name is Gary Michaels and this is a comedy tutorial channel. If you are starting out in your comedy career, I urge you to hit that subscribe button and join the community we have here on this fantastic platform. If you are a returning subscriber, a big welcome back to you. On this video, I'm going to give you a few techniques and tips on how to go about best remembering your comedy set while you're on stage because none of us like those freeze moments where we have no clue what's going on. So in this video, I hope to be able to address some of those issues that you're facing that we've all faced in the past before on how to remember your comedy set. And if you find yourself in those situations where you do go blank, well, we're also going to talk about improvising during those times. And I've said it before, opening up dialogue with the audience, a little bit of crowd work too. So let's jump right in. Now I'm going to start off with a point you might not like to hear. However, I'm going to say it anyway. It is in your best interest to never bring a notepad onto the stage with you again. And the reason is this. If you do get stuck, you're better off figuring out where you are and how to get the room back on side and how to remember your set without the use and crutch of taking a notepad out to remember where you are and look down at it. Because the audience is simply not going to give the joke the respect it deserves if you have to look at the page to remember. Now, maybe your character has a very funny bit built in and you're using it as a prop. Well, obviously that's fine. If you have it built in and you're using it as a prop, then great. But as a rule, I would steer clear from bringing a pad on stage, especially if it's simply not a prop and it's genuinely there for you to keep track of where you are. What you should be focusing on is how to stay calm in those moments when you do forget your material and figure out how to engage the room, how to turn it around right there while you're facing your audience and they will respect you a lot more for it because at the nights you're performing in, most likely open mic nights, it's okay to forget your material now and then. Everyone knows everyone is starting out and that's why they go to see fresh talent starting out and a lot of them actually enjoy the moments where you freeze and regroup yourself and come out stronger because everyone sitting in the room who is either also a comic or thinking about giving it a go well the reason they haven't given it a go so far is because that little moment there where you froze on stage and you saved yourself and got yourself out of it without the use of a pad well, that's a little bit of magic right there. That's talent and that can be worked on and made even better. Anyone can take a pad out of their pocket and look at where they're supposed to be and then say the next line. It also breaks the entire illusion of what you're trying to create in the room. You're trying to create the vibe of you walking up and just by talking and going on tangents and opening up dialogue with the audience based on what you're talking about, you're making it look like they're all in on a joke that you're creating. You're not making it look like you wrote the joke earlier on in a cafe. Now, of course, the audience in the room do realize you did write that material beforehand. However, the magic is in the performance. It's in the live energy. They don't go out to comedy night to see you reading the jokes from a page. They want you looking in their eyes and expressing whatever story it is you're expressing to them. And they really want to feel that it's 
made on the spot and every live show is made on the spot regardless of how old the material is you should make it new you should make it feel as fresh as you possibly can and that is not going to be done while reading it from a notepad a performer who does not use a pad and delivers a mediocre set will be remembered more favorably than the performer who delivers a better set and looks at a pad continuously throughout their time on stage. So there are lots of different ways to remember a set. However, in this video, I've broken it down to three main different types of sets you're going to perform. Well, the first one is if you were to learn it off by heart. Every single word in your set, you're going to learn off by heart and deliver it exactly the same way you wrote it out. And then the second way is a little looser than that, where you have a few bits learned off in sections and then maybe the transition between one section to another, you've left a little loose on purpose, just so you can either improvise on a topic or else open up dialogue with the audience, just to break up that level of focus where you're just going very fast through the set. And then the third way, is of course to have as loose as you possibly can. You might only go on stage with a couple of words in mind that you're going to discuss in as much detail as you can improv around. And of course you'll have jokes written out for each word and you'll choose depending on the energy of the crowd and where the focus and the energy is whenever to deliver those written set up small pieces of punchline. But Mainly, you're going to be just rooting for new punchlines as you go along. And each has their own pros and cons to it. And my advice would be to experience in all three of these categories. So let's say if you're performing for a 15 minute set, well, you want to have parts that are learnt off that you know are going to absolutely hit the mark with the audience and then you want to have parts that are going to be looser and you want to open up dialogue with the audience and then you want to have a few sections which are just really loose and let the audience get as crazy as they possibly can, throw the energy all over the place and figure out if you're a performer who enjoys remembering it word for word and if you're a performer who likes to go on stage and improvise and whatever you do don't like it doesn't mean you should steer away from it you should absolutely learn how to get to like it because it's only going to serve you well if you don't enjoy rehearsing over and over again material at home you need to come up with ways that make it fun for yourself because it is going to be important to deliver a very well structured set certainly on certain types of nights when those audiences like that kind of style and then other times you might be able to go up and improvise it. But if you're a performer who's shy with improvising, you should also open up that door as well and figure out little games and ways that you can improvise more. And as I said before, if you're doing a lot of open mics, you should be booking just a few of those open mics where you are only going to be improvising on stage. I've always said on this channel, open mic comedy is a place where you need to express yourself, fail over and over again, and really learn. That's the number one reason you go to open mics before you progress on from there. Learn the most about performing on stage in front of people as you possibly can. And it will serve you well to just do improv at only a small percentage of the open mics you are performing at just do improv the audience will like it because it stands out at an open mic night because not many acts do it so you'll stand out just for that reason alone and who knows you might smash it out the park a few times and of course because you're recording your set all the time you will know what material you said on stage and now you can bring it to your writing session and actually create some material around of what you improvised on stage and you know it works because it worked that one time the first ever time Time you said it and that's a great thing about improvising it's very difficult to get the best reaction out of a written piece but if you improvise and you stumble upon something fantastic in front of a live audience there is a real great energy to what you've just said because they can all tell you've just improvised that line and they love you even more from it and it's a really great way of figuring out if material really works. Whether with a written piece, 
well, we all know that it takes quite a while to say a written piece the way we have it in our mind when we write it. When we finally write it and it's finished and we go, that's it, and we say it on stage, we realize, oh, that didn't quite hit the mark. I might have to go back and rewrite that joke. Where if an improvised piece lands correctly, well, then you're already onto a winner. And by bringing it into your writing session and even rewriting that, you're even making a fantastic joke that bit stronger. Now, a question I get asked a lot is how long should you practice learning a word for word section? Let's say you are performing for five minutes and you want to learn off every single word you are saying in that five minutes. You want to learn every single word. Well, I would advise to practice that set around 30 times a day for about three to four days. Now, that sounds like a lot or maybe it doesn't sound like a lot to you when you're already practicing it way more than that well brilliant stay with it try and practice it even more as much as you possibly can you want it to be as learnt off so it's actually boring for you to say at home it should be so easy for you to get to the end of that without missing a word at all and if 30 seems like a lot to you, well, start in sections. Put 15 minutes aside and perform it three times. And later on, you're going to put another 15 minutes aside and put it, say, it three times. And then another 15, three times. You get where I'm going with this. Sooner or later, you'll be able to put maybe 20, 25 minutes aside. And if you are lucky enough to have the time, well, in no time at all, you will get to be able to say it 30 times a day. And the great thing about what we do is you don't need to necessarily say it out loud and perform it. You could just say it to yourself as long as you're muttering the words so you can hear it. Don't mutter them so that you can't hear it because you're really just thinking about it then and that's not the same. But even if you're at work, you could be just muttering to yourself the words of your set. And people might think you're crazy, but you are. Now, this is also only my opinion, and it's how long I used to spend learning off a set if I was to perform that set word for word. If you're the kind of person, perhaps you have an acting background, and you find learning off word by word sets very, very easy, and you're very good at it, it might take you a whole lot less time than it did with me. And I found I didn't need 30 times a day to learn off word for word, but I did need 30 times a day to get bored at saying it because I wanted to have that fight to make it feel live and you on stage. That's what we should be doing. You shouldn't learn off mostly at home just because you want to give it that live feel on stage. That should be created just by being a good performer. Your material absolutely should be learnt off and learnt off and learnt off to the point where you are bored. Every time you hear the first word of the entire bit, your brain naturally goes to the second and third and fourth and you can see paragraphs in your head every single word you need to get obsessed if it's what you want to do and deliver those real tight well-written bits well then obsession is key for this i can't stress that enough so another reason to practice as much as possible is when you get to a certain level where you know each word and you can get through the set quite confidently when you practice it beyond that you begin to know and understand your set in a very different way and words, certainly in phrases, will begin to stand out more than they did before. And you'll get to a stage where you'll be able to remember the entire section of material based on one word. And it mightn't even be the overall word of what the topic is about. It might be very interesting to you to what word actually represents that entire bit. And if the bit you can make it longer. Let's say your routine is about, as I always say on this channel, <laughs> I always use an excuse, the gym and religion. And let's throw in another one, uh, being at college. So you got the gym, your religion and going to college and you learn off three different sections of material, which might sound like a lot, depending on how much you've written. 
and there might be a word in the gym and there might be one word in religion and there might be one word that sticks out while learning off the school. Well, now you got three words that represent the entire three part section. So when you write down three words in a piece of paper, you know exactly word for word, three whole sections. Now, isn't that a lot better than writing the entire way up your arm before going on to perform comedy? And certainly far better than scrolling through your pages on stage in front of people who are waiting for their turn to perform. So that is why I tell you to practice beyond just remembering the words. Because when you get to a stage where you can remember an entire section of material based on one word, what that also allows you to do is during that section, if something is to happen, let's say you get a heckle, let's say you want to open up dialogue with the audience, whatever you want to do. Well, you've learned off your set so much that you can remember the words you stopped at and whenever you need to go straight back in and start from where you left off and it no one even realizes that you missed a beat from the set because you didn't. Now sometimes when you go on stage and you believe you've learned a piece off to as much as you possibly can, you look back at your recording and you realize you've left a section or a joke out of it and you didn't even notice you did it on the moment. If this is happening consistently, especially with the same piece of material that you're finding it very difficult to remember, well, maybe it's not strong enough to be included in the set. So really have a think about it. And if you're still leaving it out and you're giving yourself a hard time about it, well then take it out of the set. It can always be put in someplace else if you really feel it must be included. But in my experience, most of the time when I've left a piece out of a really well rehearsed set and I've done it over and over again, it's usually because the piece didn't stand against the other material I had learned off and it just simply wasn't good enough. And when I took it out, I felt better because I could get through the material and remember every single section of it. And as a result, well, maybe the material, because I was happier saying it, that it was 100% accounted for, it was delivered better and it was enjoyed more. But as I said at the beginning of the video, my advice would be to mix up the three different methods of performance and remembering. Do go on stage with loose material. Do go on stage with a very well written out and very well remembered constructed piece of material and mix the two and see how much that broadens up your set because the audience want time to be able to breathe. If you give them some time that's a little looser, be able to breathe where you might be improvising slightly around a few different topics you want to discuss or maybe you're just saying written material learnt off material much slower way much more conversational way opening up dialogue always with the audience and then when the audience is ready do hit them with the learnt off running right through material that you know is going to deliver because it's important to have a mixture of both because if you get up in front of the audience on a stage where they're not ready and you go into a long story form, very, very wordy piece. It doesn't matter how good you have it remembered. Well, it's going on deaf ears because they haven't been primed to listen to so much information. So having the mix is the right way to go about it. So I hope this video is giving you a little bit of inspiration and a few techniques on how to remember the set and also be brave enough to improvise a few bits now and then and do the crowd work and mix the two of them together and the audience is going to appreciate it because you're going to keep them on the edge of their seat with your performance style because they simply do not know what's going to come next. If you have a few cool ways of how you like to remember your set, then please let me know what they are in the comment section so I can get to work and steal them from you. If you also want to talk about anything else in the comment section, we do that. And if you want a future video made on your own thoughts or questions, in the comment section is where we do that. 
as always give this video a like if you have enjoyed it it means a lot and it helps get the video in front of more viewers and cannot thank you enough for hitting that subscribe button if you want to become a member of the channel or help out in a further way you can do so all the information is in the description box of this video until then you can click any of the links you see and get more tutorial videos on comedy and get your performing career started right for me i will see you on the next video right on